Hello, this is Craig, and let's talk about the tactical RPG. This is a genre that's really showing its age. Um, there have been some more recent things coming out for it, but they've all been uh, simply very, very slight evolutions off of older IP. Um, the only real notable one is uh, the new XCOM game, which was a radical departure from the earlier XCOM games, but was still very fun. Uh, and they did that primarily by being hard and uh, making very li limiting your resources hugely, um, uh, rather than relying heavily on stat management, they relied very very heavily on uh, super limited resources and cover. Uh, other notable uh, tactical RPG came out recently, Fire Emblem Awakenings, which is very good, but it uses the same foundation as the earlier Fire Emblem games. There's not very much innovation in the tactical RPG space, which is generally a sign that the genre is close to dead. But let's talk about two pieces of the tactical RPG that could be used, um, and, and generally aren't. One is the concept of, of uh, range, of moving characters away from each other. Lapusel Tactics really did this with uh, it had these fonts, and when you moved your characters into position, they would redirect them. And if you made a chain out of it, uh, you could you could do some kind of mass effect here. Um, and of course, you could also have other effects being along this chain. Uh, this was a way to push formations apart. Normally, formations are very uh, tightly packed. But with this, your characters had to be widespread in order to actually contain a wide amount of map. And uh, uh, in turn, this always led to a conflict between whether you wanted your characters to be close and supporting each other, or widespread and actually being effective. Uh, if you go the other direction, then you have something more similar to what the recent Fire Emblems have done with, it, with their buddy system, where when you stand next to someone, it's not simply a matter of you know whether you can reach an enemy or whether you're blocking off the enemy or whatever. Um, instead, the buddy system allows you to take uh, bonuses from, from people you're next to, uh, and if you attack, there's a chance they'll attack. If you're attacked, there's a chance they'll counterattack with you, and so on and so forth. And this buddy system has a lot of promise behind it, but it's really, really crippled by the fact that the battles all take place in a sub-window. Now this is a really archaic idea, and uh, um, the f it, it exists from back in the days when you couldn't show battles on the primary map because you didn't have the actual technical capability to do that. Um, this is archaic, and we'll just presume that we're going to get rid of it. What does getting rid of it allow us to do? Well, it allows us to move the individual attacks onto the map screen. Now, this is important because a unit might be here, approach you, and then attack you. And then what happens? Well, let's say that you got attacked by this enemy unit here. What if your response was not simply to you know, counter, but instead to move to the side? and counter from the side. Now this has rearranged your whole formation and this could be bad or it could be good but it's a complexity that doesn't exist. It's a it's a very basic kind of complexity that hasn't been used in very many tactical RPGs if, if any. Um, normally movement on your, you know, m movement as part of uh, defense is not um, uh, is, is usually bad, it's usually getting knocked back. But this offers a lot more complexity, especially since there's the option of chaining things together or moving in and suddenly being close to another person who's now buddied up with you. So, for example, uh, let's say that um, we've got this formation here where you've got uh, a rogue, uh, a mage, and a knight. And an arrow comes in, and the rogue's defense against an arrow is literally just to step out of the way. Um, assuming that uh, there's nothing in the way, the rogue will simply move to the side, and the arrow will continue on, and it will hit the mage. But the knight's response to that is to push everyone to the left and take the arrow himself. So by firing that arrow, uh, this whole uh, group has moved one step to the left. 
Now obviously other complicating factors exist, such as barriers, uh, enemies, uh, other allies, but I like this idea. I like the idea um, because it adds a lot of complexity to how your turns resolve without adding a ton of complexity to the stats or to the engine. And these are two uh, basic kinds of gameplay that are generally overlooked. I thought I'd mention them.